All right, welcome back, everybody. It's your friend Chad here, and I got my friend on today, a new friend, and we're here to talk about a topic that is uh, near and dear to my heart, and that is plastic surgery. I haven't had any, but I've seen a lot. Some of it was good, some of it was bad. And I think, you know, anybody who's seen bad plastic surgery, they have a strong opinion on it. So we're going to talk about it specifically as it relates to the entertainment industry in South Korea. So K-pop, K-dramas, a lot of Korean entertainment is sort of dominating the, the pop media landscape world right now. And I think, you know, the effects that these changes people are doing to their bodies are having on both their mental health and just the way media and people's images and body images is affected around the world is something we really uh, we really could all stand to look into a little more. My friend is Kiana. Say hi to people, Kiana. Hi, everyone. And she's she's here because she's much more of an expert than I am, to be honest, on this subject. I, I have done some research uh, in preparation for this video, but she has, I guess you could say, been doing a lifetime of research because she's been a fan of K-pop and K-dramas for years at this point, longer than anybody else I know. Yeah, I wouldn't call myself um, an expert, but I am very into K-pop and K-drama and all that stuff, so... I do know uh, a few things. Got it. We love the humility. If you had agreed with me that you're an expert, I would have ended the video right there. We would have just come <laughs> off. So there was somebody you brought up to me when we were prepping for this, uh, just an example of a person who you said their surgery was sort of an extreme outlier or it was sort of just, uh, how would you describe it? Somebody whose surgery was a, f a, s a focus within the K-pop circle? Yeah, so um, there's a girl group named, called Espa and there's four of them and they're kind of known, like all four, for having plastic surgery. I don't know if you had the chance to um, look up some before and after photos, but it is a big debate in the K-pop community whether it's true or it's not, because a lot of people are like, no, it's natural, like those photos are edited, those photos are not real. Um, there's a girl, her name's Karina. Um, they're I don't, I'm not too sure whether some of the, her older photos are authentic versus others, especially since I can't pronounce it. It starts with like a U in Korean. Before she became popular, she basically went viral in like um, the Korean community for being so pretty when she was like in high school. But I feel like even when you look at older photos of all of them, they all had something done. Absolutely. When I was doing my research, that's one of the things that really stood out to me was the the age ranges uh, at which these women started having surgeries. Not even just the entertainers, but I mean, one in five women in South Korea has had a cosmetic surgery. Some people estimate it's as high as 25%, but most of the uh, the sites I went to, the articles I read, said one in five, 20% is about right. So mm -hmm. these women, I mean, it's very common to get plastic surgery, and you're talking about she went viral in high school for being so pretty, but... High, yes. sc high school age is not, it's not uh, an unusual age range for them to start getting some of their surgeries. Mm -hmm. I mean, these, these eyelid surgeries, some of them do these facial contouring, yep. they're shaving down the sides of their cheeks to, uh, to yes. make their faces thinner. Yes. That's like a very big thing in K-pop, not just K-pop. I think like in Korean culture in general to have a very sculpted face and even when they get their like faces shaved and essentially you like just break your bones you know it's kind of um if you think about it it's kind of like getting a like grating cheese that's kind of how they shave down the faces um and and there's and they will still like contour and all that stuff to just achieve like the most perfect look and also i want to point out that um for espa their whole concept is ai so they have to look like they're not real that's like basically their whole like you know the whole gimmick. concept of what they have it's their gimmick that is a crazy gimmick to have too like that must be just mind shatteringly insane to have to have the gimmick of I can't look like a real person. I have to look synthetic, like somebody who was crafted by a computer nerd, not a not an actual human being. <laughs> That's yeah. I was looking up uh, some articles about just how some of these things have mental effects on these people, and what I really got mm -hmm. more of, what's been more researched even than that, is the physical effects. 
So the facial contouring, what you're describing, where they shave the chin, they shave the sides of the face, they create a certain arch in the jawbone, these types of things have had uh, a lot of bad, bad, bad cases, I guess, side effects, not botched jobs, but complications, I think is the word I'm looking for here. Uh, there was actually a study done at Columbia University where it's like the majority of people who have had these surgeries experience some form of permanent numbness in certain parts of their face. So just their ability to feel their actual face uh, in certain places is gone. So it's it's kind of crazy to think about that. I know we don't really think about, you know, oh, you're numb. You can't feel, you know, a certain part of your body. We don't think of that that is as extreme a result as, you know, in America with the BBL is kind of the big plastic surgery trend that's taken over. Um, and that kills people. You know, a bad, like a BBL done badly will kill you. So the idea of facial numbness may not seem as intense of a consequence uh, for a bad, for surgery as some, to some people who are used to that being the the bottom line how bad things can go, but I think we really need to we need to look at that like if your face is numb if you can't feel it if you can't be sure that you're posing it correctly that you're smiling right, um, you know, if you have a fly you know sitting on your face an eyelash anything like that that would really affect your life and have a, a deep impact and the fact that one in five women are having surgeries like this and. The majority of people who, according to this one survey, at least, there's only it's only the one study I'm looking at, but the majority of women who uh, were interviewed for the study did have permanent numbness in some parts of their face. It just goes to show that the physical implications of all this surgery are are just reshaping their society. It seems like like for all these women to be to be doing this. I want to point out that it's not just women. You know, I don't want it to seem like oh, women hate themselves, women should change, plastic surgery is awful, blah, blah, blah. A lot of men also do plastic surgery. Some are subtle, some are not. And I don't know if you know this, but a lot of times um, the average person will get plastic surgery to get like a promotion, their job. That is something else. Thank you for pointing that out. That's something I wanted to, to touch on. It was, uh, it was, there was a survey going back since like 1994 here where was, they were asked uh, reasons people got the surgeries, and a lot of them said it was for work, for promotions. And it says, when you're doing a job application in South Korea, companies required to see a photo of you and your height. So, yep. mm -hmm. so they, they, mm -hmm. how you look will actually impact, do you get hired or not? Um, and to speak to the women thing, you're right about that. Uh, South Korea has the highest rate of male plastic surgery in the world, I think, way higher than the U.S., but it is still dwarfed by women. Uh, so... The amount of women uh, in the 30 to 39-year-old age group who have had at least one plastic surgery in South Korea, based on this one study I have, is 33%. So that's one in three. Whereas with the men, it's 4%. So that's one in about 25. So still, that's the highest rate in the world for men. And if you go to the entertainment industry, the K-pop and K-drama industry with actors and uh, actors and other forms, other entertainers, definitely I think you're going to get way higher numbers than that. I don't have stats to back it up, but I mean, hey, I'm not a statistician. I'm just going to tell you, like, I can see these people. Some of these men, a lot of these men have had plastic surgery. But it is, it does, it does seem to be, in the broader society at least, it seems to be more dominated by women. Uh, I mean, just the fact that one in three women have had a surgery is a crazy stat. One in 25 men is also crazy, but that's... That's actually, interestingly enough, in line with the amount of women in the U.S. who have had plastic surgery. So a woman in America is as likely to have had plastic surgery as a man in South Korea, crazy enough. Yeah, I don't know if you've heard of um, um, ghost, doc ghost doctors. There was actually a case. Um, I listened to it um, on a podcast, and basically there was this um, South Korean normal guy. Um, I forgot his name. Then basically he went, I think, to get like a nose job or something. And then basically he went to this like pretty popular agency and the agency that he spoke to the doctor and everything. And then, you know, he was just like the doctor basically explained everything, what was going to happen. It was going to be like a quick surgery. He was going to come in and out that same day. He didn't even need to stay over um, overnight. And then he actually died. So what happened with these ghost doctors, and it's actually more common, and not just in Korea, I think it happens like all over the world, but this case um, just became very, it was like a very big case. And basically what happened is the doctor who he did speak to didn't operate on him. Basically this other doctor did, like this random doctor either, they don't even have to be plastic surgeons. They can be like dentists, they can be students. 
And basically those are sometimes like those are the people that are doing the surgery. And what happened is that ghost doctor like botched the surgery and just left them there him to die like bleeding. And the reason they found out is because um, basically there was a camera in the operating room and his mom like watched the whole video of just of what happened to him. That's crazy. I actually pulled that article up while you were discussing it. The name of the person in question is Quan Dehi. Sorry if I'm pronouncing oh, it correctly. Oh, yeah. It is uh, K-W-O-N, yes, last name, D-A-E hyphen H-E-E. Or actually, I think that's his first name. I think that's how they do it. Yeah, that is that is a crazy case. And it's yeah, it's exactly what you're saying, the idea of ghost surgery. Yeah. Like, I mean, what is the point of this? Are they just saving time? And no um he went and the thing is he went in because of like he wanted to get like a promotion or he wanted to get like a better job right it was for work and yeah. then he died yeah it's real tragic i mean yeah that's yeah that's that's a lot deeper than facial numbness that is actual death oh man it says actually in this article i uh, can't can't be sure how how factual this is it's on yahoo it says that he was actually he said he was inspired by k-pop by some of the k-pop stars he saw to to uh he like showed pictures of the people he wanted to have a face like and they were all they were all male k-pop stars so mm. it just it just goes to show the effect that the plaque surgery within the entertainment industry has on the average person in south korea and their mm -hmm. self-image and how they want to how they want to look i mean man if you are a surgeon in south korea right now you must love k-pop you must just go crazy <laughs> for the for the effects this has you're like yes please get more you heard about that AI group, Espa? You were like, man, let, yeah. me, let me promote them to everybody. Play all their songs in my office 24-7. So I don't know if this is actually true, but um, a lot of times when um, Koreans would go get plastic surgery, the doctors, you know, and even like in America everywhere, the doctor would sometimes ask you like, oh, is there a certain celebrity or is this a certain person that you like their facial structure or do you like their nose and then they'll pull up like a reference photo and karina she's like one of the top people that people will pull up and show their plastic surgeons be like oh this is what i like about her or like i want to look like her something like that ai girl is the number one girl they're like yeah i want to look exactly like her that's crazy i wonder if we're going to get something like that in america with the rise of or just worldwide with the rise of ai you know these artificial intelligence images and things like that are there going to be people showing up to plastic surgeons with an AI photo they created? Like, this is what I want to look like. This guy right here. And it's not even a real person. <laughs> yeah. That's I mean, crazy. Yeah. 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 I mean, the beauty standards in Asia is are very different from America. And I feel like, like what you said, um, you know, to like uh, put out a resume, you have to put like your picture and your height. I feel like looking good is such a big of like who they are like I have some Korean friends and a lot of them um even say and some of my Korean friends are saying that like to go grocery shopping or you know take out the trash or just kind of doing things in America that we don't really think about what we wear most of the time you know but there they have to like dress up because sometimes it's seen as disrespectful because like why are you dress like a slob even though you're just going to the grocery store you know like being not only like being physically attractive but also dressing the part is like a big part of their culture and i don't want to say just koreans because i'm filipino and like in the philippines it's the same it's something very similar right it's like if you're dressed kind of slobby it's like People don't really take you seriously. It's like, why are you dressed like that? Yeah, I think that's a thing in a lot of cultures around the world. Definitely within the East Asian cultures, it seems like image is everything. I mean, it says here in this article that 90% of women uh, admit that they expect their physical appearance to play a part in whether or not they get a job. Um, mm -hmm. So, I mean... I mean, the other 10% are probably just lying and saying, no, it doesn't matter because they're pretty. You know what I mean? They already look good. Yeah, they're not going yeah. to admit that it's uh, it's playing a part. They want to act like they're qualified. This is yeah, no, yeah, this sure. is crazy. I mean, there, there are over 250,000 people each year going to South Korea to get these surgeries. Uh, foreigners who are going there. A lot of them are from China and Thailand, so it does still apply within that broader East Asian, you know, appearance-focused mindset, but 
people from outside those countries are making up about 50,000 of these uh, of these international foreigners going in just to use South Korean surgeons. So the K-pop, K-drama, the explosion of the Korean entertainment industry to becoming a worldwide entertainment hub really does seem to be having an effect. I mean, ever since 2019, these numbers have just gone up more and more every year, and they've gotten more and more people from Western countries. So that just goes to show the effects that the explosion uh, of an entertainment, a specific niche within the entertainment industry can have, not just on entertainment globally, you know, but just on people's lives globally. It's really interesting. I want to point out, like, what I was mentioning to you earlier, that sometimes it's like the TikTokers, right? They get sponsored by these companies to get, like, free plastic surgery. And then so they promote it on their website or they promote it on their YouTube, TikTok, whatever, social media platform. And they're like, oh, it was so great. There was a translator. This was, like, the food. They took care of me. I felt very safe. Surgery went well. And so now they're promoting that, like they're promoting this certain facility or whatever. And then people are like, okay, I'm since they had such a good experience, then I'm going to go and book that appointment also, you know, so it's not just K-pop per se. It's yes, a large part of it is like the entertainment industry. But some parts is also these like, TikTokers and social media influencers being like, I had such a good I had a great experience, so you will have a great experience too. Well, if anybody from the Korean uh, plastic surgery industry wants to promote or sponsor this video, I will definitely take you up on that offer. Um, I'm not going to actually do the surgery, but hey, I'll go out there and I'll do whatever you need me to do and I'll make sure that, uh, that you get somebody going and I'll give you great reviews. Well, thank you all for watching today. I pr hope you appreciate this video. Hope this left you with some food for thought. Please like and subscribe and have a great day.